Welcome to the 2022 Google for Games Developer Summit. Hi everyone, I'm Greg, Product Director for Games on Android and Play. Today, you're going to hear from several of my colleagues and game partners, sharing tools and experiences from their journeys, building immersive worlds, and fun experiences for players. With hybrid workplaces, new technologies, and ever-changing player demands, we continue to see proof that so much of your hard work has paid off. In fact, we saw more players than ever as games continue to grow as a popular pastime. From a recent survey done in partnership with Nuzu, we found that more than 65% of players plan to continue playing the same or more than ever before the pandemic. This suggests the elevated level of gameplay we're all seeing is here to stay and remains an opportunity for developers and publishers to grow their business. Whether you're working on your first game or about to launch your next season pass, Google aims to be a helpful partner across the development lifecycle to build your worlds and grow your game. For the next hour, you'll find updates across our teams on tools and services that empower you to create awesome experiences and help sustain your game business. After our announcements, over 20 sessions will be available across mobile development and cloud infrastructure tracks with deep technical dives and great stories from some of our most successful game developers. I joined the Android and Google Play team in 2013, around the time we celebrated the first anniversary of Google Play. The mobile ecosystem we enjoy today was only starting to pick up momentum, and at Google I.O. that year, we were excited to reveal Android had gone from 400 to 900 million active users in less than a year. Since then, the Google Play ecosystem has grown to reach billions of users in over 190 countries thanks to the amazing apps and games that you've created. And we've grown right along with you, each year rolling out new tools like the Play Console, Android Vitals, store listing experiments, and more recently a business model update, all to help you propel your business on Google Play. Over the years, we've seen that apps and games are not just experiences, they're businesses, led by talented people like yourselves. So it's our goal to continue supporting your business to reach even greater potential. To do this, we will continue to build the next generation of services, tools, and features to help you create and monetize high quality game experiences, more programs tailored to your needs, and more educational resources with best practices. Thank you for being part of the journey and the community we've built together over these years. We look forward to continuing to innovate and grow together for many years to come. So let's dive into some of our game-focused announcements related to Android, Chrome OS, and Play. Now, I'd like to introduce you to Leo Alebe, Managing Director of Partnerships and Business Development for Games at Google. He'll talk to you about how we are investing in developers of all kinds. Over to you, Leo. Thanks, Greg. It's great to be able to come together to celebrate the incredible progress that Play has made over the last decade. All of that progress is only possible through all of your passion and hard work. So we wanted to start the keynote today by highlighting how we are working to support the broader games community, the incredible community of up and coming developers, as well as established developers. Each of you has an important role to play in the future of the games industry, and we are here to support you in all of your success today and into the future. We want to help developers throughout the game development lifecycle. We also think it's critically important to support the games community as a whole. We've done this before through programs like Change the Game. We launched Change the Game in December of 2017 on a mission to make mobile games truly for everyone by celebrating and empowering women as players and creators. We've also made space for people through items like this series of store activations, highlighting strong underrepresented group founders of apps and games. We are committing to launching programs and initiatives in these three areas. Promoting diversity in games and of games. Empowering the next generation of game makers. And celebrating women who are changing the game. Today, we're pleased to announce that Google Play is taking our commitment to improving the games industry around us even further. This year, we are investing $1 million in cash and $1 million in ad credits so we can invest in scholarships, grants, and sponsorship support across organizations focused on driving positive change in the games industry.
From representation to mental health to accessibility, we believe that it is critical to invest both our money and our time. For selected programs, we will be volunteering and hosting seminars led by the Google Play team. We're also committed to helping all developers thrive, whether these are large multinational companies or small startups and indie game studios just getting started on their game development journey. They are all critical to providing the services and experiences that people around the world look for on their Android devices. One way we're doing this is by continuing to expand our Indie Games Accelerator and Indie Games Festivals. The Indie Games Accelerator is a program that provides indie developers with mentorship and exclusive access to Google and industry experts, as well as a network of other passionate developers from around the world. Last year, we nearly doubled the eligible markets for participants to more than 70 countries. It's exciting to see such fresh ideas and talent continuing to bring great, innovative games to Google Play. We also expanded our Indie Game Festivals, a program that showcases high quality games that are ready for the spotlight. In our most recent event, we combined programs from different regions into a single virtual experience and opened it up to people from across the world to join. The quality of games we saw was amazing. And what's really exciting is to hear about the success many of the participating developers achieved after being in the program. From significant install lifts to revenue growth, several studios shared that the exposure helped them open doors to build new relationships that led to financial investments and global publishing deals. And we're excited to give alumni from both of these programs an opportunity to meet publishers and pitch their games for publishing deals at the Indie Games Demo Day on March 22nd. Thank you, Indies for continuing to pour your creativity and passion into such great games and head over to the link you see here to learn more about our 2022 events. Now, while the Indie Games Festival and Accelerator are great ways to support game developers in the early stages of their growth, we think it is also important to have programs that support developers as they become more established and enter a new phase. Today, we wanna to talk to you about two ways to do that that we're really excited about. First up, Play Points. One of the premier ways that we support our developer partners is through the Play Points program. Play Points has already launched in 28 countries and our participating partners have really benefited from the program. For example, we see developers increasing their revenue up to 4X while also connecting their game with new, highly engaged audiences through the program's promotional channels. In the coming year, we look to build on the success of the program by adding new features and expanding to additional markets, with a goal of driving impact across engagement, retention, and revenue for your games. Finally, we also want to talk to you about a brand new program that serves our largest game developers. Developers at this scale have long lead times and invest a lot of time and money through every part of their game's life cycle from development to pre-launch marketing to finally launching and keeping their millions of users happy every single day. So today we're introducing the Google Play Partner Program for Games with additional services and features tailored for our largest developers. Benefits of the program include faster releases with a priority publishing queue, enhanced pre-launch tools like pre-registration testing and store listing experiments for pre-registration, growth and engagement tools post-launch, like LiveOps, access to insights to device attributes across Google Play, additional integrity protection tools to fight scaled abuse, and finally, invites to early access programs with more features to come. Developers who meet the program criteria will see a new experience when they launch the Google Play console. We've added a program page that lists all of your benefits at a glance, along with links to helpful resources. Some program benefits are completely new features, and some are enhancements or higher limits on features that you're already using. For example, to help our large game studios make the most of pre-launch game testing phase, we're giving play partners who qualify the ability to invite pre-registered players to exclusive beta tests of their new games. Players love the opportunity to help shape the game before launch, and developers benefit from having a large-scale, real-world, closed beta test that they couldn't easily replicate by any other means. Partners can choose to invite testers based on country and device total memory, or gather targeted feedback and build excitement with their most valuable audiences. 
Activision took advantage of this feature in early access and told us that it played a big role in the success of their Call of Duty launch. And that's just one of the new benefits. We've already welcomed a few partners and the feedback from our early access program has been very positive. If you qualify for the program, we'll be in touch soon to introduce you to all of the new features and services available for your business. We're also excited to add more developers and features to the program over time. And of course, we won't stop launching features that benefit the entire Play developer ecosystem. Thanks, Leo. In addition to the investments we just shared in the Android and Google Play ecosystem, we have a number of exciting product announcements to share today. I want to take you through how we're making it easier to bring Android games to more screens, develop high quality Android games, and show you some new tools to grow your game on Google Play. Let's start with multi-screen gaming. For Google Play, we're seeing that Android has continued to grow in popularity rapidly around the world. With over 2.5 billion monthly active users on Google Play, this massive worldwide audience is playing games across more form factors than ever before. From Android phones to foldables, tablets, Chromebooks, and Google TVs, our mission has been to enable games on all these screens so we can meet players where they are and give them the convenience of playing games wherever they are. We've done well on this mission so far, and we're proud to be one of the largest ecosystems to help you find game-making success. Tablets are offering an incredible game and media experience. Over the past 18 months, we've seen people around the world buy and use Android tablets more than ever before, and foldable devices are an exciting, innovative form factor as our OEM partners push the future of mobile devices. Gaming on these devices offers the opportunity to bring more engaging and immersive experiences than ever, and it represents a large opportunity. For instance, 49% of people who use their tablet while watching TV use it to play games. For foldables alone, we've seen more than a 2.5 times increase in device sales year over year, and it's easy to see why. Foldables put the power of a tablet right in your pocket. For tablets, usage in the home and at work has transformed in recent years, with an almost 20% increase in tablet sales that continued throughout 2021. Users are doing more than ever on tablets, spending almost 10% more time on their devices than they did in 2019. For game developers, this is great news. The investments you've made in your Android titles to support different screen sizes and orientations helps you reach new sets of users in these rapidly growing categories. Speaking of which, another large screen to think about in your overall continuum is Chrome OS, where your Android games can also run. Chromebooks had an incredible year in 2021. We're really excited about the continued growth of Android games on Chrome OS in particular. Android usage on Chrome OS has grown over 50% year over year, led by games, with contributing new titles like Dead Cells and Smashcarts.io, who have optimized for Chromebooks. Notably, we announced that Unity now offers x86 support, supporting x86 instruction sets on 32 and 64-bit based Chrome OS devices. There are also a lot more ways to play video games with Chromebooks. For example, the Steam Alpha just launched, making this longtime PC game store available on select Chromebooks for users to try. You can check that out on the Chromebook Community Forum to learn more. And later this year, we'll have a public beta for a new games overlay for select Android games, making these games playable with user-driven keyboard and mouse configurations on Chromebooks without developer changes required. Lastly, cloud games are more vibrant on Chromebooks than ever before, with services like Stadia and GeForce Now now making over 1,400 amazing PC titles available for streaming. Chromebook users are spending millions of hours per month playing big titles like Cyberpunk and Fortnite. Collectively, these experiences make Chromebooks an increasingly attractive device for gamers. This year, we're going even further with multi-screen games. As we studied the behaviors of those gamers, we made two interesting observations. First, with the billions of mobile-only Android game players, there's a large cohort of intense gamers who are multi-screen owners. They switch between devices to play their games on different screens depending on their mood, locale, or game genre preferences. For this cohort, playing games on mobile remains highly convenient, and they routinely switch to a desktop or a laptop 
when they want to play on a large screen or get a precision control experience. Second, in a global study conducted by Google, 76% of our mobile gamers showed strong interest in playing the same mobile games on desktops and laptops as well. In sharing these insights with many mobile developers, we found they were keenly interested in this opportunity too, and they wanted to reach a larger audience with the same game. More importantly, developers want this to be ROI positive and avoid the costs and complexity of supporting additional platforms. So in January this year, we rolled out Google Play Games for PC. This is a new standalone Windows PC application built by Google that allows you to play a high quality catalog of Google Play games optimized for a desktop or laptop PC. Since January, we have offered this as a beta in South Korea, Taiwan, and Hong Kong, where players have been experiencing their favorite mobile games seamlessly across their mobile phone, tablet, Chromebook, or now their Windows PC. With Google Play Games for PC, players can easily browse, download, and play their favorite mobile games on their PCs while taking advantage of larger screens with mouse and keyboard inputs and enjoy them using high performance emulation. The players experience no loss of progress or achievements while switching between devices as each game syncs with the cloud and it all just works with your Google Play Games identity and profile. Our beta already includes some of the most popular mobile games in the world, like Mobile Legends Bang Bang, Summoner's War, State of Survival, Three Kingdoms Tactics, and Homescapes. Collectively, these games delight hundreds of millions of players globally each month. We're excited to be partnering with top developers to expand their reach, build engagement, and bring their incredible games to larger screens for players worldwide. To tell us more about their multi-screen journey, let me welcome Sherry, the VP of Marketing for Moonton, the creators of one of the world's most popular battle arena games, Mobile Legends Bang Bang. Sherry, take it from here. Hi, I'm Sherry, and I'm in charge of VP Publishing for Moonton Games. Moonton is known as one of the pioneers of mobile gaming with millions of international fans worldwide. Mobile Legends Bang Bang, currently has over 100 million monthly active users who enjoy non-stop gameplay with their mobile devices. Last year was a successful year for Mobile Legends Bang Bang, including its eSports division. According to eSports charts, in the global ranking for mobile eSports viewing hours in 2021, Mobile Legends Bang Bang ranked first with 386 million hours of total viewing, up 2.5 times in contrast to 2020. Furthermore, Mobile Legends Bang Bang was recently awarded as the best mobile game overseas by Sensor Tower Epic Awards 2021. The platform and its worldwide mobile accessibility has brought joy to many gamers. And we are excited to bring the game one step further to other platforms. It gives us great honor to announce our partnership with Google to bring Mobile Legends Bam Bam to Google Play Games on PC. Now, players in the better regions can continue their legendary fights seamlessly across the devices and enjoying the desktop quality game matches with their friends. With the developer tools provided by Google, we successfully landed Mobile Legends Bang Bang on Google Play Games for PC. And all updates for the game will be made available on both mobile and PC at the same time. We hope for our players to join the game on PC. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. We're thrilled to be partnering with Moonton to bring your IP to Google Play Games for PC, and I'm glad to hear it was easy to get on board. A key principle for us is ensuring you get high ROI from Google Play Games for PC, so you can get the most out of your existing Android game while reaching more screens. 
Our platform allows you to use the same Google Play tools, developer console, and publishing services like Android Vitals to access Windows and Chromebook audiences. It's the same APK, same workflow for easy PC compatibility. We've also built a high-performance, trustworthy experience with deep integrations into Android for an optimized gameplay experience. To deliver on the promise of high-quality, large-screen gaming to our users, your game will have to meet some key requirements that you see on screen here. Requirements like supporting mouse and keyboard input, building on x86, and integrating the play game's identity help us deliver a certified catalog of games that delivers the best mobile to large screen experience. We have much more to share with you about Google Play Games during this summit, so tune in to our Google Play Games for PC sessions, and you can express interest to add your game to our catalog by visiting the link you see here. In July 2021, we unveiled Play As You Download, a new feature built into the core of Android 12 that allows users to get into gameplay in seconds while the game assets are downloaded in the background. All this can happen with minimal developer changes to your underlying implementation, leveraging services like App Bundle, Google Play Signing, and Play Asset Delivery. Since then, the beta program has been progressing steadily, and after testing this new capability with more than 180 games, we are pleased to tell you that we will soon open up Play As You Download to all Android 12 users. Consumers will be able to identify compatible games in the Play Store through a badge, and will see a new rapid install experience when the game is ready to play. We also encourage developers to continue to sign up to the beta at the link that you see here, and you can see how Play As You Download can help you reach more users by removing unnecessary friction. We also continue our focus to helping you build high-quality Android games. In recent years, we've focused on tools and SDKs that simplify this process and help give you insights about how to improve the performance and stability of your games. On Android, we've continued to invest in making game making easier in partnership with game engines, including homegrown native C and C++ engines. Last year, we released the Android Game Development Kit, a set of tools and libraries to help make Android game development more efficient. I'm happy to report it was really well received, and since then, parts of it have found their ways into many first and third party game engines. The kit has three key focuses. First, integrated workflows led by the Android game development extension for Visual Studio. Then there's essential C and C++ game libraries, like the game activity and game input libraries. These help you build more stable native C and C++ games with less Java. And lastly, performance optimization, where tools like the Android GPU Inspector and the Android Performance Tuner can help you track, profile, and optimize game performance before and after a launch. Since we last spoke about the AGDK in July, we've received a lot of feedback from you on various performance and quality of life improvements, and we're excited to share the work we've done to help debugging, memory management, and graphics profiling. First, let's talk about the Android Game Development Extension for Visual Studio. This extension allows game developers to build directly for Android from within Visual Studio, bringing our expertise in fast, reliable Android building, debugging, and performance to your Visual Studio team. While AGDE in particular helps you develop your game in C or in C++, there are often bits of development on Android that require Java, and we found it was very painful to switch between debugging C and Java, and even more so as you try to migrate projects to and from Visual Studio and Android Studio. To make this easier for you, AGDE will now include cross-compatibility between Android Studio and Visual Studio. Now, AGDE projects are supported in Android Studio, and you can open them directly there to edit Java code in Android Studio's debugger. Developers have told us this is a great time saver, as opposed to trying to recreate the project in Android Studio or maintaining two projects in parallel. We are also adding support for Visual Studio 2022, and soon, pushing a slew of performance and feature improvements that you've all been requesting. Next, let's talk about memory management. We know this can be challenging on Android as a multi-purpose operating system. With other applications running in the background, your game is routinely at risk of being killed by our low memory killer daemon, 
without a lot of telemetry to know what's going on. To help you slay the demon, memory management, and avoid an LMK, we're introducing a new library into AGDK to help developers understand their memory consumption. With the new Memory Advice API, your game can find out how close you are to an LMK on any device. With that runtime information, you can choose to immediately reduce memory consumption, like changing your game's LOD assumptions, or simply collect telemetry to understand your resource consumption on memory-constrained devices and plan adjustments to your gameplay. We're making this beta API and its memory management superpowers available in the AGDK today. Last up for the Android Game Development Kit is the Android GPU Inspector. Originally released as the first platform-wide GPU profiler for Android, it's proven essential to understanding when your game is bottlenecked on the GPU versus CPU and achieving better frame rates and battery life. However, identifying GPU bottlenecks alone isn't enough. So we introduced a frame profiler into beta last year to help you identify which render passes are slowing your game down and see the impact of the resources and graphics API usage have on frame performance. For example, it can be pretty difficult to figure out where you're overdrawing or creating unnecessary work, but with AGI, it's much easier to see what's happening in each render pass. As an example, Crafton was able to use AGI to profile PUBG Mobile and reduce GPU usage by 22% to the benefit of their players. We're excited to make that frame profiler generally available to all developers today and help you discover the performance benefits our early access developers have achieved in the last year. You can check out all the new Android Game Development Kit features at the link that you see here. We launched Reach and Devices at this very summit last year. It's a decision-making tool in the Play Console that shows you the distribution of users and activity across different device attributes. This can help you with both business and technical decision-making for your game on play, like deciding which device specs to build for, build a business case for which new countries to launch into, or understanding where you can push devices to their limits. We recently published a case study by FunPlus, who use reach and devices when planning a major update to their hit game, State of Survival. This overhaul upgraded certain game features from 2D to 3D, and they would require more memory, compute, and storage than ever before. Reach and devices help them establish how to tier devices for delivery of their new features, targeting the right devices with the new experience while increasing engineering efficiency. We continue to improve this powerful tool, especially to help factor in monetization on the devices you attempt to reach. Currently, Reach and Devices shows install-based metrics as a way to measure opportunity. But if your primary focus is revenue, you may want to understand your ability to reach non-paying and paying users with different spend profiles. So we've enhanced this powerful tool with revenue metrics for your game along with peer comparisons. Now, you can easily evaluate revenue and its growth rate when troubleshooting technical issues or making investment decisions on which devices you distribute to. For example, you can discover what your revenue share is for a specific device spec and see how that compares with peer games on the same devices. You can learn more about this and other new features in the Reach and Devices session. You can also try them out today in the Play Console. You'll have heard this many times from us by now, but I'll never tire of saying it. Quality is a key component to your success on Google Play. Quality and stability affects player churn, your game's discoverability and promotability on the store, and it influences the users who evangelize your game to others. As a result, we've been working on enhancing Android Vitals. This is your destination for troubleshooting the technical quality of your game on Google Play we can share that 70% of the top 1,000 games on play use Android Vitals routinely. And our top Vitals features requests include the ability to explore your Vitals metrics at country level and accessing those metrics programmatically. Today, we're delighted to announce that you can now see country breakdowns in Vitals for all your metrics. You can also filter down to the country level across all metrics in both Android Vitals and Reach In devices, so you can better approach your user experience by country and understand where to focus to resolve crash rates and ANRs across those device specs. Check these out in the Play Console today.
Additionally, today we have launched the Developer Reporting API to all developers to get programmatic access to your core Android Vitals metrics. This new API helps you retrieve Vitals metrics and issues data like crash and ANR rates, counts, clusters, and stack traces. A long-standing request, we're excited to offer this API to help you automate your quality workflows, incorporate Vitals data alongside your other data sets, and use the data to power your own dashboards. You can learn how to get started on these new Android Vitals features at the link that you see here. Continuing with the theme of game quality and stability, we want to do more to help you to avoid buggy, unstable gameplay. We've made improvements to Crashalytics to make debugging your games easier. Crashalytics is Firebase's mobile crash reporting tool that helps you track, prioritize, and fix stability issues faster. With the latest updates to Crashalytics, developers using native code will now get greater visibility into their app C++ crashes. Additionally, developers will have access to a wide range of native crash types being reported with more in-depth stack traces so you can debug and fix issues faster. These native crash enhancements have been extended to our SDK for Unity to show symbolicated C++ frames tied back to your C-sharp code for easier troubleshooting. We're also excited to announce that Firebase Remote Config's latest personalization feature is now available in beta. Personalization harnesses the power of machine learning to automatically find the optimal experience for each user to produce the best outcomes, like which players are best to nudge into social share interactions. Game studios like Halfbrick and Ahoy Games have already used personalization to improve revenue and ratings with minimal effort from their team. You can check out these exciting Firebase updates for your games today. Let's switch to some important tools to help you grow your game business with Google Play. The Google Play console is receiving more enhancements as a resource for creating invaluable business insights and driving decision-making as you optimize and grow with Google Play. We are particularly excited to launch strategic guidance for monetization as we strive to help more game developers at scale. When we talk to developers, it's hard for many of your teams to contextualize and prioritize the lower level metrics you can influence directly in game and which ones impact your overall business performance. Large developers turn to experts, like our growth consulting team, to analyze a game's performance and make recommendations on where to change your game design or analysis that helps you prioritize a content roadmap. Strategic Guidance brings you those expert consulting insights straight into the Play Console. With one intuitive interface, it helps you understand how your different monetization metrics fit together to contribute to overall revenue performance. And it just works if you're leveraging Google Play billing APIs. Even better, we use peer set comparison benchmarks to help you identify which metrics give you the largest opportunity to grow. And every metric comes with trended data and direct suggestions and advice on how to increase performance, all derived from the same growth consulting experts who help build the interface and work directly with our partners. Many game developers don't have access to growth consultants, and our early partners have benefited from having easier access to this analysis. So now, all monetizing game developers can use strategic guidance to analyze their business performance like an expert. You can check it out in the Google Play Console today. We also know that for many developers, accelerating buyer growth through discounts and promotions is a key component of driving revenue. At Google Play, we designed a growth promotions program that automates promotion marketing on Play at scale, driving purchases and games across our platform. We deliver Google-funded offers like dollar-off promotions to eligible users to help make their next purchase more attractive. We optimize the eligible users using machine learning trained on a variety of signals, including different usage and spending behaviors. Google Play has over 1.8 billion users who are eligible for personalized offers at any one time, and the system helps you drive incremental spend at scale for your games. As game makers, we know you are constantly looking for the right time to upsell a player to make their next purchase in your game, without being annoying. With all these Google-funded offers, you also don't have a way of knowing if Google Play has an offer for one of your users during gameplay to help you make the sale. 
Now, for the first time, we are excited to help game developers leverage offers from Google Play with our in-app offer system and API. In-app offers are designed to engage players by making the first purchase or repeated purchase experience more attractive using Google Play discounts and offers. With in-app offers, you can show offers like whole dollar discounts or loyalty point offers from Google Play contextually during gameplay when you think your players will make a purchase. For example, imagine your player just lost a level and they are thinking of buying more game resources to power up before they try again. With in-app offers, you can choose that exact moment to ask Google if the user has an eligible discount for their next purchase and let them know it's available to increase the likelihood they'll convert with that extra value from play. By displaying a personalized Google offer at the most relevant moment, you stand to convert more players to payers and drive incremental spend in your game. You'll also give your users a seamless promotional experience. By tapping Use Offer, the user can be directed to your store to purchase what they want with that offer and be right back into their game in seconds. In later phases, we're looking for ways to let you fund the offers yourself and define who is eligible, all while leveraging our machine learning capabilities with billions of users to make the paid conversions you care about the most. You can express interest in our early access program for an opportunity to try out in-app offers before the feature is generally available. To be considered, you can reach out to us via the email you see here on screen. We went through a lot today, so let's remind you what it's all about. We're supporting the broader games community, the incredible community of up-and-coming developers, as well as established developers. We're excited to announce the Google Play Partner Program, We've invested in products to help your business grow on Android and Google Play by making it easier to bring your Android games to more screens, now including PCs, making game development easier and providing tools to help you develop high quality Android games, and providing you new tools to drive promotions and build strategic insights to grow your game on Google Play. More than anything, we want to thank you for an amazing year. We've all been playing together and supporting each other through a global pandemic. Through it all, you have managed to craft amazing experiences, build new worlds to surprise and delight, and come up with endless ways to support your incredible communities. We look forward to many more years together, creating successful games and platforms for players around the world. For more information on everything we talked about today, please be sure to check out the links that you see here. Next, I'll hand it over to Belinda and Nash to share updates on ads innovations for games. Hi, I'm Belinda Langner, and I lead product development for app campaigns in Google Ads. It's great to be here with all of you today. I've been working on app campaigns since we launched, and I'm always excited to share with you how far we've come in building features for game developers like yourselves. Recently, I've gone into Word Games on the New York Times Crossword Puzzle app, and it's the first thing I do every morning when I turn on my phone. It's even become a family affair, and my family loves to chime in and help me out during breakfast. As many people, like myself, immerse themselves in games, we've seen a huge acceleration in mobile gaming during the pandemic. For example, players not only discovered more games, but are now continuing or increasing their playtime. And this presents a great opportunity for you to build a flywheel for your game, where you can successfully acquire, engage, and monetize your users in order to power more user acquisition and game growth for the future. Today, I, with my colleague Nash, will share with you the latest ads product innovations designed to help you acquire valuable players and to maximize your app revenue growth for the long term. To kick things off, I'll walk you through the latest features where we're launching in-app campaigns to help you acquire valuable players at scale. So let's go ahead and dive in. In 2021, we saw intense growth in the gaming market. There are now close to 3 billion players in the world, where mobile game revenues account for more than 50% of the global market. And while this presents a huge opportunity for developers like yourselves to acquire new players for your game, it is not always easy to attract and retain the right users. With app campaigns, it's easy to find these players for your game across Google's largest properties like YouTube, Search, and Play. You define the business goals that matter to you, whether that's driving installs for your game launch, acquiring players who will spend in your game, or 
optimizing the return on your marketing investment. Then, automation through app campaigns will help you find more of the high quality players across search, YouTube, Play, Discover, and the over 3 million sites and apps in the Google Display Network. Acquiring the right users is especially important at moments like a game launch, where you only get one chance to make a first impression. Having an effective strategy at the start to reach the right players can help you make your app a success. And beyond the launch, you want to make sure that you can continue to optimize your revenue. And that's why today, we'll be introducing two updates to app campaigns to help you acquire these high value players faster and more effectively to accelerate your game's success. We'll talk today about enabling faster campaign creation from pre-registration, plus optimizing and measuring your ads revenue effectively. Let's take a deeper look at the first part, helping you to set up your new game for success and get you the results that you want. We've seen pre-launch marketing become increasingly popular as a way to get a head start towards driving installs within a very short time span. With pre-registration, you can build excitement and awareness for your game in countries that you select before you publish on Google Play. Pre-registration allows users to visit the Play Store listing and sign up to receive a push notification when the game is ready to be installed. Players will also be able to opt in to have the game auto-installed on launch day so they can start playing immediately. In order to accelerate launch performance and drive even more quality traffic to your game, many developers are using App Campaigns for pre-registration, or AC Pre for short, to give a burst of installs during that first critical week of launch. App Campaigns for pre-registration is an app campaign type that helps to drive early, high-value users to your game on Android during the pre-launch stage. This helps you to get a head start on building your golden cohort to generate even more engagement and revenue for your game in the next few months. We recognize that developers like yourselves want to smoothly transition from advertising app pre-registration to marketing the launch. And those first few hours of a game launch are crucial to building your loyal player base. Historically, it has not been possible for developers to set up app campaigns for installs while an app is still in the pre-registration state, making it difficult for advertisers to plan ahead with acquiring high-value users at launch. Soon, you'll be able to set up app campaigns for apps in the pre-registration state in the Play Store. This means that you can avoid any time delay in going to market with your launched app and start advertising to users immediately after the app status changes from pre-registration to launched. And now that you've launched your game, the next step is to retain your high-value players and to grow your game revenue. Ads monetization has become even more popular with developers recently as players are spending more time in-game. As Greg and Leo mentioned earlier, there are over 2.5 billion monthly active users on Google Play, where this massive worldwide audience is playing games more than ever before. And in fact, 70% of these players are continuing to play at the same or greater level since the pandemic. However, developers of ads-funded games face a unique challenge. It is not easy to get your apps into the hands of players who are most likely to engage with ads. A holistic monetization strategy is needed to optimize and measure your ads revenue for the long term. Today, we have an update on how you can better measure and optimize for your ads revenue. Last Dev Summit, we announced Target Return on Ad Spend for Ad Revenue, or TROS for Ad Revenue, which is a way for you to find users who are more likely to engage with in-app ads. When you bid to target ROAS with a focus on ad revenue, you can directly optimize to revenue earned from ads shown in your app and dynamically pay more or less depending on how likely a player is to engage with your in-app ads. TROAS for ads revenue is powered by the Google Analytics for Firebase SDK, which helps you measure in-app events and understand the player behavior beyond the install. 
By linking Google Analytics for Firebase SDK to Google Ads, you can import Google Analytics conversions for bidding in your app campaigns. Bidding on Google Analytics conversions helps to provide more signals to our models and enables higher performance for your app campaigns. In addition, Google Analytics unifies revenue reporting across key metrics such as the in-app purchase, subscriptions, and ads revenue reporting to give you a full picture of your user lifetime value. And I have some great news to share. All AdMob publishers are now able to seamlessly integrate ads revenue data into Google Analytics for TROS campaign optimization at the click of a button with no additional SDK implementation required. This will incorporate all AdMob platform revenue, including mediated ad networks and exchanges. But that's not all. I'm also really happy to announce that Google Analytics now provides a complete picture of your app revenue from all monetization platforms. This allows you to import third-party ads revenue data into Google Analytics and send to Google Ads for target return on ad spend optimization. This new feature, third-party ad revenue in Google Analytics, is generally available. I've shared some new ways to help you acquire valuable players at scale with the latest innovations in app campaigns. Soon, pre-reg apps will be able to create app campaigns before game launch. While TROS for ads revenue is still in a closed beta, you can already get a head start on integrating your third-party ad revenue data into Google Analytics today. We can't wait for you to try them all out. And now I'll turn it over to Nash to cover the latest monetization strategies in AdMob to help you maximize your app growth. Hi, everyone. I'm Nash Islam, and I lead global strategy for AdMob and Ad Manager for apps. I'm a three-time Googler over the past 10 years, and outside of Google, I've been a startup entrepreneur and app developer building with Firebase and Google Maps APIs. I've also launched and scaled ads monetization teams across the world. Outside of work, I'm a hobbyist rapper with an album published on major streaming platforms, and I personally enjoy playing Settlers of Catan and Clash of Clans. One learning I've had over the years is the importance of integrating your monetization strategy early. For ads-funded games in particular, a well-thought-out monetization strategy can help you gain revenue momentum after your acquisition efforts and power that flywheel growth for your game. That's why today, I'm excited to share how the latest product innovations from AdMob can help you to maximize the revenue potential of your games. As Belinda mentioned, we've seen an acceleration digital, where gaming maintains an upward trend post the pandemic. For example, the majority of players plan to continue playing at the same or even greater level after the pandemic. In fact, we see that existing players actually increased their playtime by 42% in 2021. This increase in engagement provides a great opportunity to earn more revenue from your game. While providing a great user experience is key to driving long-term growth, it is not always easy to balance your monetization strategy with the great user experience. Three key ways to help you achieve sustainable revenue growth are using the right reporting to gain more clarity in ads performance, leveraging automated tools and formats to increase user engagement, and diversifying demand sources to deliver more value. Let's see how the latest improvements from AdMob can help you to generate ads revenue growth for the long term. First, let's talk about using the right reporting to understand your performance. Knowing the user lifetime value or LTV will help to understand your users' activities and evaluate the effectiveness of your user acquisition spend. Today, publishers have little visibility into the portion of LTV that comes from ads without building their own internal systems or purchasing expensive tools. This is why AdMob is introducing a new impression level LTV pingback that will help you calculate more accurate user LTVs from AdMob including revenue driven by the AdMob network, as well as mediated networks in waterfall and in-app bidding. After showing an ad, AdMob will share the revenue from that ad with the publisher via a callback in the Google Mobile Ads SDK. This will be made available to all publishers in the coming months. 
Transparency of LTV across partners helps you identify where to allocate spend on campaigns that work well. This is why we're excited to share that AdMob's impression level LTV feature is also integrated by top app attribution platforms like Adjust, Singular, and Apps Flyer. This makes it easier to get clarity on return on ad spend, also known as ROAS. Let's take a look at how a world-leading mobile game studio increased revenue by 45% with AdMob's ROAS data. Blacklight Studio Games is a mobile gaming studio in India, and their most popular puzzle game, Ludo Superstar, has been downloaded over 30 million times. In order to expand their global user base into new markets, the team used app campaigns to attract new users and drive more downloads. However, the team did not have full visibility into the lifetime value of those users and the ROI of their user acquisition campaigns. In order to gain more clarity in their ad's performance, the team used AdMob's impression level LTV feature to track the eCPM for each ad impression. Together with Firebase and BigQuery, Blacklight Games was able to analyze user acquisition and revenue data to find that certain markets were generating a higher return on investment. As a result, Ludo Superstar shifted focus to scale up spend in those markets, and in six months, Ludo Superstar saw a 45% increase in overall revenue. That's not all. Ludo Superstar was able to increase their user base in new markets by 45%. While gaining a full understanding of ads' performance is vital, it is important to keep users consistently engaged in your game. A good in-game experience is key to retaining your users and growing your business for the long term. Firebase Remote Config is a cloud service that lets you dynamically control, change, and optimize your app so you can run experiments to test ideas and deliver personalized experiences, all without releasing a new version of your app. By using a remote config with Firebase A-B testing, you can gain insight into the impact changes have on your key metrics. For example, you can A-B test a new ad format, change the frequency of ads shown to different user cohorts, and even alter the placement of the ad within the app to track impact on revenue. Now, Remote Config's personalization feature can help you automatically optimize individual user experiences to maximize your goals through the power of machine learning. While A-B testing gives you insight into how variants perform for different user segments against a control group, personalization works to continuously find and apply the right app configuration for each user to produce the best outcomes, taking that load off of you. Halfbrick, the game studio behind titles like Jetpack Joyride, Dan the Man, and that instant classic Fruit Ninja, used personalization to optimize ad frequency which led to a 16% increase in revenue without affecting engagement or retention. They also use personalization to determine the best time to ask users to rate their app, such as when users are most enjoying the game. And they were able to boost positive App Store ratings by 15%. Firebase Remote Config personalization is currently in beta. Another key to creating successful in-game experience is through engaging ads interactions. AdMob is constantly optimizing ad formats in order to drive long-term revenue success for your game. Developers have been using AdMob's rewarded ads as they provide a non-intrusive ads experience by allowing players to opt into an ad in exchange for an in-app reward. At the same time, publishers benefit from high user engagement and CPMs. We're happy to announce that we're optimizing rewarded ads to make it even more effective for publishers. Alongside the standard rewarded experience of short videos or playables, we have launched display ads and rewarded for a lightweight and non-disruptive ads experience. This has greatly improved rewarded demand, enabling publishers to increase rewarded impressions and revenue. For example, Let's take a look at how distinguished Japanese mobile game studio Gung Ho integrated rewarded ads into their game and increased total ads revenue in their hit title, Puzzle and Dragons. For 10 years, Gung Ho's Match 3 monster collecting title has relied on in-app purchases as its primary monetization model. With this loyal community in mind, Gung Ho's top priority is to provide the best player experience to keep players coming back time after time. As Puzzle & Dragons matured, the team decided to explore a new hybrid monetization strategy using rewarded ads and incentives in addition to its in-app purchase offerings. 
Gung-Ho first conducted tests in small markets and saw positive results early on with their ad design and placements. Encouraged by the outcome, Gung-Ho decided to move forward and integrate rewarded ads in its app version with the highest daily active users. The result was a 300% lift in ad revenue in their largest market. In addition, rewarded ads had a positive impact on user engagement and retention without sacrificing a high quality gameplay experience. My last update today involves helping you to achieve sustainable revenue growth in a fast evolving app landscape. 2021 was a year of significant change for app developers as the industry evolved away from waterfall mediation and shifted towards in-app real-time bidding. Access to a diverse range of buyers can help you make the most of your unique inventory and deliver higher earnings and eCPMs. Google AdMob supports many demand sources to help you earn more across real-time bidding and waterfall mediation. To increase competition for your inventory, we are continuing to add more buyers to the AdMob platform to help you earn even more. Currently, we have over 200 demand sources available for real-time bidding, including demand-side platforms from brand advertisers and many of the largest ad exchanges globally. We're currently onboarding more buyers such as Vungle and Snap to our bidding solution to compete in real time for your impressions. And we'll be accelerating our efforts over the course of 2022 and beyond. Today, we shared new ways to help you acquire valuable players and maximize your app revenue growth for the long term. Belinda showed how the latest app campaign updates can help you to acquire valuable players at scale and unlock more revenue. And I just shared how AdMob can help you to maximize app revenue growth by using LTV reporting, automated tools and formats, and diversified demand sources. We hope these updates can help you to continue accelerating growth for your games. Next, I'd like to introduce Jack from Google Cloud to talk about how cloud is helping game developers succeed at planet scale. Welcome to Games at Planet Scale. My name is Jack Buser. I'm the Director of Game Industry Solutions for Google Cloud. I'm here to talk to you today about why Google Cloud is great for games. With 3 billion people around the world playing games today, nearly half the planet counts themselves as players of some sort. Games are one of the world's biggest forms of entertainment, if not the biggest. And the industry is growing so fast, with over 400 million new players expected to start playing games in the next few years. And this growth is coming from entirely new regions all over the world, and from new demographics. The reality, nearly everyone today is born a gamer. To keep up with this pace of change, game companies really have two core goals. Number one, entertain and delight players everywhere, and understand those players better, provide better experiences for the players they have and to those they're looking to keep. As game companies work towards their two overarching goals, they need to solve for a variety of challenges. And here at Google, we're here to help. First off, serving diversity. With over 3 billion players, game companies need to serve the widest variety of players they've ever seen. Designing for and serving a diverse audience is crucial. How do you have deeper insights to serve these new audiences better? Retaining players. How do you retain the players that have already tried your game? Are you set up to leverage AI and ML to do so? Manage consolidation. As game companies grow to meet this planet scale opportunity, they increasingly need to unify various data sets into one set of data that they can analyze and understand to develop a single 360 degree view of their players. Global reach. With players all over the world, a planet scale network with planet scale solutions is absolutely necessary. Player experiences, as games continue to push the boundaries of what's possible, Google has the cutting edge technology to enable this pursuit. Player to payer. Did you know that of the 3 billion players, only about half of them are paying for the games they experience? Google Cloud can help you encourage and convert these players to payers. Harnessing the capabilities of Google Cloud will help you reach more players and become more profitable. First, you get the best of Google. 
our infrastructure and network can handle and process data at planet scale. Combine this with our leading AI and ML solutions, game developers can unlock insights, offer recommendations, and power predictions at massive scale for truly personalized gameplay experiences. And it's all done on the cleanest cloud in the industry so that you can meet this new opportunity responsibly. You'll also get our in-depth cross-platform game knowledge and opportunities. From over 100 billion hours of game-related watch time on YouTube in 2020, we know what players want. We leverage data and learnings from the 3 billion active Android and Google Play gamers, one of the world's largest game stores. And from all this, we have dedicated industry solutions that bring it all together for games within Google Cloud. Google Cloud is dedicated to building the technologies the game industry needs to solve today's challenges and grow into the future. Our mission is simple. It's to help game companies transform to meet this new global opportunity with planet-scale solutions. And we've organized this mission around three solution pillars. Engaging players and payers for the publisher. Improving player experiences for the player and scaling game production for the developer. We aim to focus on the business objectives most important to game companies. Publishers need to optimize profitability at planet scale. We can help reach global audiences and meet these global needs. Google Cloud can help unlock player value with a build-to-launch suite of game solutions and help maximize the value of player data to improve user acquisition, retention, and even monetization. Retention and acquisition are key for game companies, and we aim to meet a number of business objectives in this space. Let's work to reliably connect players together at scale with flexible, auto-scaling, global matchmaking. We want games to be fun, inclusive experiences, and we can help automate and reduce toxicity and harassment within games. Finally, these experiences need to be secure. The need to mitigate cheating and downtime is crucial. We can help. Developers have told us that their technology needs and business objectives are often around reducing operational toil and decreasing time to market. Collaboration amongst global talent is more important than ever before. We can help globalize content production at reduced cost. By simplifying and scaling infrastructure, we can improve security, access control, and deliver better telemetry data. Simple, scalable, global are key aspects to the game's business, and we've developed fully managed, scalable databases and game server solutions to address this need. In summary, We've built game solutions that address the outcomes that we've heard our customers, like yourselves, request the most. And we've started this journey with many of the top game companies around the globe. Here you can see just a sample of the who's who of the games industry that are using Google Cloud today, and with many more beyond this list. We couldn't be more proud to partner with these leading games companies on their transformation journey to meet this new global opportunity. We've got a lot of great content this Google for Games Summit this year. Be sure to check out more under our cloud games and infrastructure track. If you're an eager developer itching to try something out, check out our open source cloud projects on GitHub. And lastly, you can learn more about our solutions for games and get in contact with someone at our website. Thank you so much for your time. I'm Jack Buser, and now I'm going to pass it off to my longtime friend and colleague, Kareen, who's going to tell you the absolute latest about Stadia. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Stadia keynote today. And thank you to all of our partners and to Stadia players for your ongoing support. I'm so happy to be here to share how we're making it easier for developers and publishers to bring their games to players faster than ever. We'll start with an overview of the significant changes we're making to grow discoverability of games on Stadia. From there, we'll take a closer look at the latest tech tools and partner incentives available to you, making it easier and more rewarding than ever to bring your games to Stadia. 
Last, but definitely not least, we have a big update on the work we're doing to offer our streaming technology to customers who want to deliver their games directly to their players. So let's get started. When we introduced Stadia, we outlined one of our most important ambitions, to make it easier for players to discover and instantly play great games. That hasn't changed, and in the coming weeks, you'll see some big changes in the Stadia store. We're making it possible for people to browse games in our store without needing to log into or create a Stadia account. That means it will be easier for everyone to browse the 200 plus games we have to offer, in addition to more than 100 new titles arriving this year. It also will be easier for players to find Stadia game pages through Google Search, and for you, our partners, to bring players to your games through unique click-to-play links. In addition to making Stadia games more discoverable, we want to give you the option for players to find your game and immediately try it with no commitment. This is a new feature I'm really excited about. Click-to-play trials enable players to try your full game on Stadia in seconds. Players can jump in and try your game without having to pay anything or even signing up for a Stadia account. Enabling your click-to-play trial is as easy as deciding how long the trial should last, with no additional developer work needed. We kicked off our click-to-play trials pilot phase last October with Hello Engineer, Control, Riders Republic, and the Jackbox Party Pack 8. In that first public test, we found that players are about 35% more likely to respond to a click-to-play trial promo than a traditional buy or claim message. Even better, we've seen that players who complete a click-to-play trial and go on to purchase a game are significantly more engaged than those who convert through regular ads. We're continuing to fine-tune this feature following a great response from press, players, and our partners, and we will expand access to more games. We intend to offer click-to-play trials as an option for all partners and their games on Stadia in 2022, starting this month with a click-to-play trial of Risk of Rain 2. So we've talked about content discovery and trial. Now let's talk devices. Players can already access games on Stadia via laptops, PCs, tablets, TVs, as well as both Android and iOS devices. With the launch of Android TV and LG Smart TV apps in 2021, we made Stadia available to tens of millions more living rooms. In addition, Samsung will bring the Samsung Gaming Hub to their 2022 Smart TVs and monitors later this year, with plans to include the full Stadia TV experience. Discoverability is the key to a game's success, but the key to a successful gaming platform is its developer experience. We're continuing to build new tools and functionality to make it easier than ever to bring your games to Stadia. One of the ways we're doing this is with what we call low change porting. It has a simple goal with a big impact to significantly reduce time, effort, and resources required to bring your games to Stadia. Our Low Change Porting initiative contains multiple components, from libraries that auto-translate DirectX, to improved Unity and Unreal support, to cloud-native playtest and QA workflows. Low Change Porting allows you to quickly get up and running on Stadia with lower engineering cost, less time to develop, and less time to launch in the Stadia store. We're testing these tools with a group of partners and expect to roll them out more broadly this year. In addition to making it easier to bring your games on Stadia, we want your partnership with Stadia to be more rewarding. We're continuing to boost player engagement and your ability to generate revenue through our partner incentive programs. Last year, we started giving 70% of our monthly subscription revenue back to Stadia Pro partners and increased the transactional rev share to 85% for all newly signed games. Our partners have seen very positive results from these programs, and they're talking about it. If you're interested in bringing your games to Stadia and participating, go to stadia.dev and apply. A few moments ago, I let you know we're making big updates to the Stadia store that will enable anyone to browse your game page without needing a Stadia account. And during last year's keynote, I announced a new affiliate marketing program arriving in the first half of 2022. When you think about these updates together, things get more exciting. The Affiliate Marketing Program enables participating publishers to earn additional revenue by bringing new players to Stadia with their unique click-to-play link. After using the link to create a Stadia account and enjoy a free month trial of Stadia Pro, each player that converts to a paid Pro subscription equals 10 US dollars paid to the publisher by Google. No other game platform does this, and after launching our pilot phase with a few initial partners last December, we're excited about the insights we've already gained. As promised, we're planning on expanding access to the Affiliate Marketing Program by June 2022. The reason our team is working so hard, and the reason I'm here speaking to you today, is that we know games are what makes a platform great, 
and we want to play your games on Stadia. Be sure to watch our developer sessions after today's keynote, where some of my favorite members of the Stadia team will detail more technical innovation they've been working on. And don't forget to visit stadia.dev to apply to become a Stadia developer and access many of the programs we've talked about. As you can see, there's a lot of work going into improving Stadia to support the success of our partners, and that work will continue. We've also been expanding our efforts to help customers take advantage of our platform technology and deliver games directly to players. Our first step was to define our product in collaboration with expert partners across Google, with the goal of offering everything our customers need to build, launch, and optimize a direct-to-consumer business based on incredible streaming technology that enables gameplay on as many screens as possible. We're creating solutions that work for a range of games, use cases, and customers. But it's not just platform technology. In line with the Stadia efforts we've just discussed, we're working on tools for quicker and cheaper porting, powerful discovery features like click-to-play trials, all combined with insightful analytics that will help you optimize your marketing across all of Google and beyond. So in partnership with our colleagues at Google Cloud, we've developed a new offering called Immersive Stream for Games. It's designed around all the needs we've just described, advanced streaming technology, the right tools to port games easily, powerful discovery features, and the analytics you need to optimize a direct-to-consumer business. Last year, we began to work with early customers to understand their goals and to pilot this new offering. There are so many ways we can work with you to provide your experiences directly to players, from trials to full games to subscription bundles or even entire storefronts. Our first customer to launch a game on Immersive Stream was AT&T. At Google, we've enjoyed an innovative and collaborative relationship with AT&T for a long time. Together, we enabled AT&T to offer subscribers the ability to play a rock-steady masterpiece, Batman Arkham Knight, in full, for free, all powered by Immersive Stream technology. And here's AT&T's Vice President of 5G Product and Innovation, Jay Carey, to tell you more. On behalf of at and I'd like to congratulate Google on the reveal of Immersive Stream for Games. This technology, paired with the at and network, gives us the ability to deliver games directly to customers. Together, we deliver click-to-play access of Batman Arkham Knight to our wireless customers on the devices they already own. No need for a console or a high-end gaming PC. And for the first time, the game is available with no downloads, no creating an account, and no passwords. Simply provide your at and phone number and start playing in seconds. The full game is available via your browser, complete with bonus content, cloud-based progress saves, and picture-perfect quality at 1080p and 60 frames per second. Thousands of our customers have already enjoyed this Batman Arkham Knight experience so far, and we're preparing for the launch of our next title on the immersive stream platform soon. At the same time, we'll be expanding access for our customers to play on their mobile devices, whether they're at home or on the go. And we think our customers are going to love it, especially when they're playing on their 5G at and device. And we're excited to see how this opens up a world of marketing and business possibilities for both game publishers and game platforms. You'll hear more about Immersive Stream over the next few months. And as Jay mentioned, at and subscribers can look forward to playing another great game powered by Immersive Stream in the near future. If you're interested in bringing games direct to consumer via Immersive Stream, we want to hear from you. Just visit this link to get started. So that's all from us today. To recap, we're continuing to bring you tools and features to make it easier and more rewarding for you to bring your games to Stadia. We want to play those games on Stadia, so please visit stadia.dev and apply. We were excited to share more about Immersive Stream for games today. We've made great strides so far and are looking forward to helping even more customers bring their games directly to players this year. If you'd like to talk to us about offering games direct to consumers via Immersive Stream, please visit this link. And with that, we've reached the end of this year's Google for Games Developer Summit keynote. From mobile to the cloud, there's an enormous opportunity to build awesome experiences for gamers. I hope you're as excited as we are to work together to bring your vision to life and reach billions of players around the world. On behalf of all of our presenters, thanks for tuning in today. As part of the Dev Summit, check out our developer sessions available now in the mobile or cloud games and infrastructure tracks. Find the full agenda at the link here. We'll see you next time.